Myself? Do it. Oh. Hey guys, this is Dr. Ryan DeBell with the Movement Fix, and I'm here with Dr. E in Buffalo, and he's got me hooked up to this pink air tube measuring my breathing. He asked, he, I asked him what his favorite color was. <laughs> I had black too, but he chose this. Yeah, chose the pink. So, uh, Dr. DeBell is hooked up to a Capno trainer, so that would be this device right here. Hey, it's Dr. E with TheManualTherapist.com. Uh, people have been curious about this little device. It hooks up via USB to the PC. It, runs, it comes with some software. So what we're looking at is just uh, Dr. Bell's resting, um, like his title volume. And aver the average um, CO2 output should be between 35 and 45, so actually he's pretty good at this point. Uh, you are. It's not bad. It's not bad for lying down on your back. Well, all this stuff is state context dependent. The reason why I hooked him up is because I wanted, not only did uh, he have chronic low back pain, but he also told me earlier that the more he sleeps, the more tired he is. And he just, even before I actually met him, he was so tired he was napping in the parking lot before I got oh, here. My flight was canceled. <laughs> right. But uh, the more you sleep, the more tired you are. It's not exactly it's not exactly normal. He says he's just tired and he just he sleeps he sleeps so much he's just more tired. So I wanted to see yeah. if he was over breathing. Over breath over breathing is very common, but he is actually not over breathing. He's he's doing pretty well. Um, again, it could be state context dependent. I would have to see is he more tired in the car, is he more tired in a sitting position? Is he more tired, you know, when he's in his practice? Um, this is just measuring, you know, measuring lying supine. He's pretty good. Gosh, you know what? It is in the car. Is it in the car? It, it may be when I'm driving. It's well. That's that's when that's, I. That's when yours was too, right? It was when I was driving, and now when I do when I do shallow breaths. If you can mimic how you're breathing right now, because I, I can I can even feel it. Anytime I even get the slightest hint of fatigue in the car. I'm breathing like how I sleep. It's very slow and rhythmic. It's like all white noise and it's just brainless, right? A car is like this automatic thing. We, we, you drive the work, there's very little thought to it, right? And then, and when I get into my breathing pattern that raises my CO2 mm -hmm. to between 35 and, and 45, I am hyper alert. So just try that. Try it. I'll have you drive me to, to the restaurant later and see what happens. So, so basically, yeah, yeah, this was it. This Nothing. Is, yeah, we're wearing this. Yeah, well, hey, I can just put this in and <laughs> drive around with this and see what happens. Yeah. No, you're doing pretty well. Let's try flexion because before you were flexion intolerant. Flexion intolerant. So it's going to make sure we don't drop this thing. Chest or stand and bend forward. Standing, standing, bend forward. Let's see what. Uh, hopefully this stays on. Yeah, it should stay on. And just hang out here. Yeah. I mean, you're okay with that, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it might actually just be harder to breathe, but um, don't talk or anything because that when you speak, it does um, it's gonna throw off your breathing, obviously. So it's average for the last twenty seconds, and that, that had to do when he was speaking. Yeah, it, it just shut right back up to above thirty-five again. So you are a good breather. Flexion is not an issue. I thought it might pop up in flexion. All right, you can go ahead and lie back on the table because your average is pretty good. Go ahead and lie back down. Okay. Now, your, um, your breaths per minute are uh, pretty good, about, you know, it's 11. Um, in order to get mine above 35, and actually I, I get to 40 like this, which is pretty good, I had to breathe at 22 breaths a minute. So did you want to increase yours? I, no, I just... Or you were that, breathing too fast and that was the problem? I was breathing too slow. I was breathing deeper so and was, too slow. Was your CO2 too low or too high? It's too low. It's usually too low. People are, hypocapnia mm -hmm. is normally the problem okay, because so people are over breathing. Gotcha. Um, so it leads to you know increased pH and that affects basically every single fluid in the body. So try to breathe. Just try to change your breathing rate. 
you know, because there there is a pattern of breathing that makes you tired, that basically seeps away your energy. So I can see that now your breath per minute are faster. We're going to do this because um, you're breathing right now at 20 breaths a minute. Oh, actually, now it's 30, 31 breaths a minute. Um, sorry, but you know what? You're, you're, the, the average for 20 seconds was still, it's still above 35, so that's good. Now let's try, let's try even, let's try just the kind of breathing that we all teach the patients who are hypertonic and in pain and we're trying to just get them to relax. Let's do the just the really deep, slow breathing and see what happens. Because it was it was the deep breathing, the deep, slow, and very rhythmic breathing that brought on my fatigue, and I, I wasn't able to concentrate. And so let's see what happens here. Some belly action going here. Train that. <laughs> Down to five point four breaths a minute. It does kind of feel lightheaded. Does it? Yeah. I'm not paying him to say this. I don't even know what it's supposed to say. I'm just saying what I feel. Right. <laughs> what I'm trying to drive is a point. It's a slow rhythmic breathing dropped to CO2 now to 29. Ooh. How do you feel? I kind of feel dizzy. Do you? A little bit. All right. So, you know, dizziness, headaches, fatigue, very, very common in hypocapnia. Now, just go up to your normal breathing rate again. So the point then is that like we agree, diaphragmatic breathing is good. Diaphragmatic breathing is good, Just yes. not so deep and slow. Well, it depends. This is, I had to breathe, I had to breathe faster. You had, you were fine with. But you breathe faster, you're still using, you're still trying to breathe down. I'm still, yes. You're not up here. Yes. I just wrote a blog did you, post did about you it. you measure when you, if you did chest breathing? No, I didn't. Oh, maybe we should do that. You, you can try chest breathing. Okay, I gotta think about it. We're talking chest-only breathing. You know, even, I mean, the whole point about better physiology, they say that chest breathing, someone may feel more comfortable chest breathing, maybe more efficient chest breathing, but they still think that it, someone may not be essentially ready, either mechanically or psychologically, to diaphragmatically breathe. You know, one of the reasons why someone may not be ready to diaphragmatically breathe, it might be threatening, one of the threats might be they're just wearing skinny jeans or something, <laughs> or they, they have a tight belt, and it actually feels constricting, so they can't do it. And you tell them to do it, and they feel threatened by it. All right, you, so this is your chest breathing? Yep, trying. How do you feel? Chest breathing is your 28. Yeah, it's harder. I mean, to me, Yeah. I've trained that out of myself. Yeah. It feels, you know, so I have to think about doing it. I don't like it. Yeah. It doesn't feel good to me. All right, let's go back to the, the, the your normal breathing state. Yeah. So again, this is individualized and you know, you just can't tell someone to breathe faster or slower. Uh, I had assumed when I st first started using the Captain Trainer um, that everyone had to breathe more shallow and everyone had to breathe faster like I did, but it's not true. Uh, someone like Dr. DeBell actually he was already breathing very well and at 11, 12 breaths a minute, I had to increase mine to 22 breaths a minute. I've had some patients have to do a short inhale and a longer exhale. Uh, so basically take in less oxygen, give off, um, uh, and, and you know, just maybe possibly decrease tone with the, with the longer exhale. I haven't actually got into it, I'm still dabbling because um, I haven't finished all the courses, but it's very, very interesting that diaphragmatic breathing, deep diaphragmatic, slow breathing is not appropriate for everyone, especially if they're getting dizziness and headaches and unexplained, seemingly non-mechanical symptoms. So, can you actually get back into this now because... Um, Where am I at? 30. Okay, so I need to go. Yeah, cool, you're, you know, your breathing is still a little fast. Uh, when you were at 35 to 37, you were breathing at about 11 to 12 breaths a minute, you're at 15 now. Oh, 
hyped up. Yeah. So, so what you could say then is to achieve that optimal range, you can't say that everyone's going to have the same breathing pattern or, or rate. No. So do, what do you think is the, the explanation for why, for example, I can breathe slower? And why I have to breathe, why, why I, I have to breathe, to breathe faster, faster? To achieve the same... I don't know, it might be the way that our bodies utilize, or how, how efficient our physiology is in terms of... The blood, the blood, the transfer, the, the gas, right. gas exchange... I'm older than you. I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting, though, because we, w- we always want to give everybody the same. Like, right. There's this one right way to breathe in terms of this deeply or this you know, frequently. Right. And that might not be right. Exactly. I mean, I, I've been likening it to, it's like, hey, everyone should take antibiotics. Or everyone needs to do lumbar extension. Yeah. I mean, every, yeah you, you can't. Or everyone needs stabilization. And it's not true. I That's mean, why just... you test. That's why you do the test. Right. And this is, why, this is why I bought this thing to give me an objective measure because before I had... I could only guess. And my guess was, hey, you need to deep abdominal breathing. And certainly, you know, there are reasons to do abdominal breathing. I mean, there, the more you exhale, it does autonomically reduce tone. And, and that could help with, with people with, you know, high tone. And it could certainly help relax people. Um, but if they, are, if they continue to have persistent headaches, dizziness, paresthesia, again, all these things are very common, just chronic diffuse pain, muscle soreness, achiness, you know, all these diffuse, unexplained complaints, they, they very well may be over-breathing, but you don't know what their rate or, or how they should breathe is until you, until you play around. And certainly you can just, without a captain trainer, you're not going to have an objective measure and try different breathing rates. You'll probably stumble, stumble upon it. But uh, this also gives a patient visual feedback, and I didn't have Dr. Bell actually looking at this, but I normally have my patients actually look at it to see. And you can actually... There's a target for you to achieve, and this is... This is visual feedback here, so you oh, can I see. Like a graph on there and everything. Well, it's a sine wave, so you need to get above the purple line. Above the purple line is 35. Okay. Oh, I have to breathe out more. So he wants to get above the purple line. I find the further I breathe out. You, yeah, you're dropping now to below 11 again, so it's gonna it's gonna end up dropping. Your breathing was a little faster than that before. <laughs> it's funny now that I drew your attention to it. You can't do it. You were at 35 for a bit, but it's gonna it's gonna end up dropping now because this is the last 20 seconds. Yeah, now it's below 35 again. So 35 would be the minimum amount of partial uh, 35 millimeters of mercury that's not kind of the dead space either um, you still have some left in you in the area that that's, doesn't have um, any kind of perfusion or transfusion so we're not gonna go well, I'll probably have them hooked up for maybe maybe five more minutes or so, but I'm not going to film the whole thing. I want, to be able to, I want them to be able to maintain that again. So this is just a demonstration, guys. The more I kind of you know, mess around with this, then um, I'll post more videos. And I'm not quite through. I'm half, halfway through all the courses to get certified in the use of this. And I haven't even actually taken the Captain Trainer specific courses. So once I do, I will uh, post more, more cases and more videos. Thanks for watching.